Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? I feel like it's been forever since I got in front of the camera, since you saw my face. Um, hopefully not a lot has changed, or maybe if it has changed, hopefully it's for the good. Um, I have braces. I'm almost at the end of my braces treatment, so I can't wait to get them off. But um, it's been a while and I've been cooking and posting. I've been doing a lot of videos. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It, it takes a lot of time to edit videos and I have three kids now and makes it really hard to get some downtime to actually sit down and edit. But anyways, I'm here and today I'm making pepper pot. I know what you're thinking, what am I doing with an instant pot making pepper pot? And for all of you people who will come on here and tell me that you have to cook pepper pot low and slow over three or four days, I get it, I hear you. And I've done that a couple of times. And when I lived in Guyana, um, that's how we used to make it. But you know what? As a mom, I have a family of five. It's me, my husband, and three kids. I don't have time to cook pepper pot low and slow over a long period of time. And so I've kind of developed some tricks in how I cook pepper pot. We also cook pepper pot a couple of times a year. We don't only cook it at Christmas when family and friends are visiting us here in Colorado. We make pepper pot for them as a special treat um, for when they come. So, you know, I have to be able to make it fast and let it sit there and marinate in the juices and in the sauce um, for a day but I can't take three or four days to make it. So if you have an Instant Pot, you just got one from Black Friday and you're like, I wanna try this thing out. This is the perfect recipe to get your Instant Pot juices going. I've had mine for a couple of years and I've made everything in it. I mean everything, I've made a rice, I've made dal, I've made stews, I've made pasta, I've baked a chicken in it. I've done everything and I'm actually working on a series coming up soon where I will be making um, a couple of Guyanese dishes in my Instant Pot for you guys. So stay tuned, that's coming up. But today we're going to be making uh, Instant Pot Pepper Pot. So stay tuned if you're interested in checking out how I do this. It'll come together in about an hour and a half and then you just let it soak overnight so that you can have all those juices going. So to get started, we're going to want to put our Instant Pot on saute. Um, you can just hit the saute button if you have one that's like mine. Wait till it gets hot and then you want to add some oil to that. While that oil is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to season my beef that I have here. I'm going to season that with some garlic powder, some onion powder, and a pinch of salt and pepper. I know what you're thinking, like, girl, let that thing sit and marinate and get all those juices going in there. But you know what? I've done it this way quite a few times and it tastes just the same marinated or not marinated. Then I'm going to go ahead and just brown that meat. Brown meat is good meat, so you want to just go ahead and brown that meat. so short I can barely see over this instant pot on this counter. No joke. The next time I'm filming I'm going to have to wear heels. Anyways, you just brown that for about 5-10 minutes and then um, I'll tell you the next step. All right, after you've been sauteing your beef for a couple of minutes, it's brown on all sides, go ahead and pour that off into a separate bowl um, and set aside. We're going to use that a little bit later to add back into the pepper pot. Now we want to go ahead and pressure cook this um, cow heel. Cow heel takes a very long time to pressure cook. And if we did it with the beef, the beef would become mushy and nobody wants mushy beef in their pepper pot, trust me. Um, so this cow heel I washed with vinegar and water before adding to the instant pot. And then I'm going to add... Uh, uh, three cups of water to the instant pot and give it a little bit of a stir to deglaze the bottom of the pan um, a little bit. 
Then you want to season your um, cow heel. So I add the remainder of that garlic powder, onion powder. I'm going to add about a quarter cup of sugar, and then I'm going to give it a little mix, uh, stir so that the sugar can dissolve a little bit. Now, I had to do a voiceover for this part and probably for the remainder of the video because my son started to freak out and started screaming and... Um, I think he thought I was talking to someone who was kind of curious about that. And I thought you guys deserve better than me screaming um, over a screaming baby. Anyways, so I added some cayenne pepper to the pot. I'm going to add a pinch of salt and black pepper and mix that all up. Then I'm also going to add calf's rib. Now, some people, when they're pressure cooking their... Um, cow heel for pepper pot they don't add the casser but this step i love to add the casser here because it really gives the cow heel a rich dark color which i love in pepper pot and it also gives it a really nice flavor so it's a win-win for me so i go ahead and i add the um the casser in there and i mix it up a little bit and then i cover the instant pot and make sure that it's sealing and ready to pressure cook um yeah, it was a little tricky for me to get this cover on because I'm doing it in the reverse so you guys can see the Instant Pot and not the back of it. But anyways, I figured it out and I got it done. And you want to go ahead and put that in the center for sealing. Now remember to hit cancel on your Instant Pot first because you were sauteing and you want to change it to manual. So after you hit cancel, hit manual, put it up to 60 minutes and pressure cook it for 60 minutes. Okay, 60 minutes up, again, hit cancel, and then you want to put it to venting and release that steam. Quick tip here, stand away from your Instant Pot when you're releasing the steam because you don't want to get that in your face. And I also use the cover as a shield um, when I'm opening the Instant Pot. Now look at this. Um, it's rich and dark, and it's getting there. It's soft, but it's not um, mushy yet. So go ahead and add back in that beef that you browned earlier and um, a little bit more sugar. So it was like a little like a tablespoon of sugar that was left over in there. And I added another half cup of calf's rib and um, just a little pinch of salt um, just to tie it all together with the flavors, mix it up. And then I'm going to put the lid back on and I'm going to pressure cook it again for 45 minutes. So at, after 45 minutes, I will start to check the meat to see if it's tender enough, and then I'll do it in uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes increments after that. Before doing that, I put my cinnamon stick and my clove in um, some cotton fabric. You can do muslin fabric if you have, and I tied it up because when pressure cooking outside of this little packet, the cinnamon stick and the uh, um, cloves become really mushy, and it gives the pressure pot um, the pepper pot a high cinnamon and clove flavor that I really don't like. I want the flavor of cinnamon and clove, but I don't want it to taste like I just have so much cinnamon and clove in there. Then I add um, two more cups of water to the Instant Pot and I um, mix that all together and I'm going to seal it up and let it pressure cook some more. So here's the thing. Cow heel has varying times of cooking, um, even if you're pressure cooking it or cooking on the stove. So just remember to um, keep checking it um, and, and doing it for 30 more minutes or 20 more minutes if you need to. Again, it's so hard to put this cover on because I'm standing behind it and not in front of it, but um, I will figure it out for you guys. And also sometimes it the heat is still in there, so it pressures up, so you have to just kind of hold it down for three days. So here we are. We have been pressure cooking this for another 45 minutes. I vented it. I'm testing to make sure that it's released. Um, I was telling you guys all sorts of stuff, but remember my son was freaking out, so I couldn't do it, but it smelled amazing, that smell that was coming out of there. I'm using the lid as a shield again, just in case anything wants to pop up not in my face and then i'm gonna go ahead and check the meat to see if it's ready um or not and if it needs to be pressure cooked some more i'm not sure what this face is that i'm making but trust me my son was on 10. i think he he's 11 months and i think he was like wondering why i was talking all the time or what i was doing with all the lights and the camera so it was a little bit of an experience for him so I'm going to go ahead and check this, this, this um, 
what am I doing? Checking the cow heel, <laughs> sorry. And so I go ahead and I um, scoop some of that fat off the top using my turkey baster. I tried to do it with my turkey baster and I wasn't as successful so I ended up just doing it with the ladle that I had sitting there and that was a lot more successful. There's just so much oil and fat that comes off of the meat that you're using when you're making pepper pot that you want to make sure you just scoop that off otherwise you'll end up with a really greasy pepper pot. So once you've gotten most of the oil out, go ahead and mix that up so that you can get all of the sauce and the meat mixed up together. And then the final thing I'm going to add to my pepper pot is two weary pepper and about a two inch piece of dried orange peel. It's important that you use dried orange peel versus the fresh one because it really has a rich depth of flavor when it's, it's dried and it doesn't taste as orangey, but it just has a really nice flavor. So I add that in and just keep in mind that you are going to be pressure cooking this. So if you don't want a lot of heat, do not put your pepper in now. You can just put it in at the end and boil it up for a couple of minutes before taking your pepper pot off. I put it in here because my kids are not eating this pepper pot this go around. Um, and actually, in fact my oldest son loves a little bit of heat in his food now so it's it's okay so I want to go ahead and hit um, manual again I'm gonna set this for 30 minutes and pressure cook this for the last 30 minutes and then I'll check it after that and if it's fine I'll stop cooking and if it needs a little bit more time I'll do it for 15 or 30 more minutes so here we go we're at the end and we're ready to sample this pepper pot Really good. Now, when I'm venting my Instant Pot, I always stand back from my Instant Pot because sometimes if the pot is too full with liquid, the liquid sprays out of the top. That's happened to me a couple of times when I was making a pot and I decided to overfill the pot. So just be careful with that. And then whenever I'm opening my Instant Pot, I listen for that little click when it's released to make sure all the steam is out. There's still some steam coming up here. Every part that's metal on this pot is hot, so just don't touch those parts. And then I always lift away from my face. So I use the cover as a little, just in case anything um, spills out, as a shield. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out this little piece of orange rind. And now you can see everything is really good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this bit out. So I typically wouldn't eat this pepper pot today just because it's just finished cooking. It's going to taste really fresh. It's not like when you cook it in a slow cooker and it's cooking slow and slow for 10 plus hours. Um, we just pressure cooked it for two hours. And while all of the juices remain in the pot because of the way in Instant Pot works, um, it will still have that freshly made taste. And I want it to have a day old taste. So. I would let this sit for a day or two. I would heat it up in the morning in this same Instant Pot. The beautiful thing about this Instant Pot is you can lift this up when it cools and you can pour this into another pot if you want to, or you can just keep it right here and in the evening and the morning, just like you would with pepper pot that you made on the stove, you just hit saute in the bottom. You saute it for, let it cook for about 15 minutes. It comes up to a boil, uncovered, um, and then you, turn it off and you cover it and let it cool down. And I would do that, um, not tonight because I just made it. I would do that tomorrow morning and then tomorrow evening. And then I would serve this, today's Monday, I'd serve this uh, Wednesday if I, um, if I weren't making it for a video. Now, because I'm making it for a video, I'm gonna pour some out so you guys can see that it has that rich, dark color. take out a piece of cow heel and some beef.
when I make pepper corn in my instant pot, it usually takes between two hours and two and a half hours. It just depends on the cow heel. And I always say maybe it's an old cow because this cow heel took forever to cook and it's soft um, and it's falling off the bone but it's not melted away whereas sometimes by two hours it would have melted away so i want you to definitely check your pepper pot at the two hour mark check the cow heel make sure that it is look this one is like all off the bone make sure that it is not so tender that you know it's going to melt away because the last thing you want is to open your pot and you have is bones and then proceed um based on that now the beautiful thing about making pepper pot with instant pot is that while this pepper pot was cooking i baked the bread that i'm gonna uh, my family's gonna eat with the pepper pot um i cleaned my house i took care of my kid i didn't have to labor over the stove my house doesn't smell like pepper pot it smells good because i just released the heat the the pressure and the steam in the house but you know how when you're using a traditional pressure cooker and all the steams coming out the whole house smells like whatever you're cooking and also if you're cooking it on the stove the whole house smells like what you're cooking and um i actually hate <laughs> when that happens uh, because when I'm done cooking I don't want to smell what I'm cooking so um, yeah so that's one of the benefits and why I love it but why I really really love it is because it's time can it saves time and you're not laboring over it you just put it in and forget it what I also wanted to say is sometimes when I make pepper pot instead of using the mixed beef that I used here the bones and the beef I got that from the Mexican market and I thought wow this is nice I'll try it this time and I, it was actually great I just use um oxtail and because oxtail takes the same amount of time to cook as cow heel I would saute that oxtail up just like I did when I was trying to brown the beef and then I would just add the cow heel in there and add all of the other ingredients mix it up close it and set it for two hours or set it for an hour and a half then i check it in an hour and a half and then do half hour increments after that and that's how it goes so if you prefer oxtail in your pepper pot do that it's easier um i just saw this beef bones mixture in the supermarket today and i thought you know what i'll give it a try and see what, how, what it tastes like and it's actually really good because i have the beef here and then there are all these bones in here um, that really adds flavor and richness to pepper pot. So there you have it, uh, pepper pot in the instant pot. Uh, that's a mouthful to say. And um, I hope you guys try this. I hope if you have an instant pot, you realize how beautiful it is and how simple it makes life. And you can really get other things done while you're cooking and how quickly it does cook because something that would ordinarily take a day to cook on the stove top um, just took me two hours and 15 minutes and it's delicious and by tomorrow it'll be even more rich and delicious and I'm gonna take another bite of this and I'm gonna do my power pot dance You guys need to try this. You're missing out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'll catch you guys next time. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I have some really fun and interesting things coming up on my channel. Because I'm trying to make it more interactive um, and really get back into the swing of things. So you don't want to miss out. And I'm going to be sharing lots of tricks and tips to keep the tradition of cooking Guyanese food in your family. And to do it even if you have a busy schedule and to do it even if you have a modified diet so stick around and um thank you guys for watching bye bye